I'd like to have a conversation about Ex Machina. Hello, I am Professor Robert E.G. Black, and this is Minutia Ex Machina. With me today is Niall McGowan from Bat Minute. Welcome. Hey, well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Robert. Always, always a pleasure. Good. Now, when was the first time you saw this movie? Oh, I was like, I was on the hype train for this movie, like, because it's only, it's, I'm still that, I'm not in that mindset of like, oh, this was like, came out like two or three years ago. It was probably like, was it now, like near 10 years ago? <laughs> Almost, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was just very much in at that point was like an Alex Garland fan. I was just like, I was just all in for X Machina when it arrived. I knew there was a fair bit of there's just hype when it was coming up too because it was, it just had a great word of mouth and stuff. So this was like a cinema trip, like, you know, opening day kind of thing for me. The thing is, like, I enjoyed it then, like the first time, mm-hmm. but I have found that like every, every time you go back, <laughs> it, it gets it kind of gets better and better every time yeah like even particularly now like making notes for this minute when you're fresh knowing like what the whole scheme of the the movie is and you can just see how densely layered the levels of manipulation are and just everything that's going on oh, it's yeah. just such an enriching movie yeah, ever since nathan showed up a few minutes ago even before he was on screen it's all just been manipulating caleb into a situation yeah yeah it's real um controlling how he reacts to it even mm. but, but what did you i'm sure you probably covered in the previous minute do you think that nathan would have hung out with caleb had he not signed like what would have happened there that's an interesting question because i don't think i considered that caleb would turn him down yeah yeah I, th- I think that's the point of everything he's doing in this scene and the one before is he's putting caleb in a situation where of course he's going to sign it mm, he's making him an offer he can't refuse right <laughs> it would be amazing if he was like you know what i just want to hang out even in this minute the way he takes that contract and just like fold it in half and like makes a point at like punctuating his sentences by getting that crease just right and then folding it in quarters again and doing the same thing Mm. he's like reducing the contract itself into this like unidentifiable object yeah so it doesn't matter anymore the the details don't matter Mm. what matters is you just agreed to this and it's already been started (laughs) it was started when you got that text message or email, yeah. whatever it was that popped up back in minute one. I do kind of want to see the alternate, like, yeah. like I could have been like a Blu-ray extra. It was like a little mini movie of just Oscar Isaac and Donald Gleason hanging out for They're a week. Just hanging out and drinking. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't want you to go now, man. I had a great time here. Then it would turn into some weird, like, comedy, like, farce where Caleb just keeps trying to get into the basement because he's curious. Yeah. It's like, why didn't I sign that contract? <laughs> like, you still could, but then I'm keeping you here for another week. <laughs> And like at one point when he gets really drunk, he's like, oh man, you wouldn't believe what Ava said the other day. Like, who's Ava? Oh, oh no, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Right? <laughs> yeah, I've only met Kyoko and she doesn't talk. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is just such a, everything about it is just so masterfully done in terms of like, Nathan's such an overwhelming presence throughout the whole oh, movie yeah. as well. It's the way he's looming over him. Yep. It's almost like there's never a, a, a physical threat to Caleb here, but there is that kind of like, he is domineering over him. Yeah. Where it's kind of like, you know, he's, he's making him a friendly offer, but it's he, also he's like aggressively friendly. Yes. Yes. Very much so. Even starting by working out when he, he knows Caleb's there. He knows he are, th- that door surely notifies him. He knows the helicopter arrived, yeah. but he goes to work out. Mm. It's also just the like he's he's had to explain about like, oh, the windowless room and stuff. But it's yeah. basically like, well, this is a prison cell. Like you were now here <laughs> imprisoned. <laughs> you're never going to see the sun again kid yeah like it's, although i guess they do go out the nice little nature walks and stuff later on yeah like, a couple times you know metaphorically you're never going to get seen the sun again i guess so i don't know how like you know how far you want to jump ahead into the minute robert it's, like, it's your show i mean basically we're coming off that contract this minute begins with caleb signing it and then nathan says good call he takes it i've already said he folds it up as he's talking and he gets up so he takes away that intimacy thing of sitting on the desk 
or sitting on a bed previously mm. and asked, so do you know what the Turing test is? Yeah. yeah. When he knows damn well what Caleb knows and doesn't know. But <laughs> you, know, you ask so he can have that little smile and be all excited. Because Yes, I can answer this question. We're already off to a great start. Yeah. I like that point, too, about like taking away the element of intimacy because it was like, oh, yeah, I'm your buddy. You're going to sit on the desk too, like giving like telling you how about how this great this thing is going to be. Yeah. And then as soon as it's signed, it's like, all right, like it's all it's back to business. Uh-huh. Now you're stuck. He kind of gives him a little sly look around, too, as he's folding. I'm like, all right. You know, it's become just a project. Well, it always was a project right. to Nathan, but like now it's much more like a, I need a clinical distance so I can observe. He's going into observer position, like rather than sitting in. With his arm around the guy, <laughs> trying to coax him on and stuff. <laughs> and Caleb answers. It's when a human interacts with a computer. If the human doesn't know they're interacting with a computer, the test is passed. Mm. Like this is the, this is the first mention of Turing. Yeah. In like the Turing test, so like the people out there aren't aware. It'd be named for Alan Turing, who was a mathematician, one of the fathers of the computer. Yep. Which is you know it's very aptly named. And people might like, I think it was like that. Was the, they made a movie about him. Yep. Where it was like Benedict Cumberbatch playing exactly. him. Exactly. It was the uh, the Enigma machine and stuff. Very famous for code cracking during World War II and stuff. And uh, a lot of stuff like, because so many different ways to read Ex Machina. Like, again, it's just such a densely, it's, just a, it's such a thick onion. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can take away so many different layers. But one of the main things that's sort of known about Alan Turing now, and one of the things actually I think that that Cumberbatch movie what are they called? Like the uh, imitation game. Yeah. That was criticized for like downplaying Turing's homosexuality. And like knowing that now is like people who have written about him have said like his obsessive pursuit of creating computers and, you know, getting into mathematical quandaries and trying to solve this, that puzzle and stuff. It was actually him. Some people theorize, I like, guess, him repressing his own homosexual mm. urges and stuff because he obviously, you know, back way back then, 1930s, 40s, etc. You know, it's like a death sentence, basically, for someone. Oh, yeah. And so basically, he's trying to put that, you know, aside. And if you try to apply like, oh, well, you know, why specifically the Turing? Obviously, you know, you got your computers. That's a very straightforward reference they're making. But if you look in things like just everything that Nathan is, because he's so aggressively masculine for, you know, would you consider it to be like a nerdy type of, oh, you know, he's a computer genius. You'd be considering him to be like a little dweeb. <laughs> you know, that's, you'd be considering him to be like Caleb. Basically. Right. But he's, you know, he's always, you know, he's drinking beer and he's, uh, you know, he's, he's working out and he's got muscles and he's got a big bushy beard and a shaved head. He looks very aggressively, heterosexually, classically coded, masculine and stuff. Yeah. But he's created, of course, then a female figure, Ava. And, you know, there is... If you're to apply the kind of, you know, that that reading of Alan Turing in there, you know, he, that maybe Nathan is closeted himself. Maybe he's hiding something, repressing something, and he's created a perfect being in a woman. Not to jump ahead to like way at the end of the movie. No, but no. Like when Ava escapes, she's using Nathan's card to get out into freedom. She kills him and then goes off to live her life. Yeah. And it's kind of like, is there kind of like a trans allegory to be seen in here, basically? Where it's like, there is a part. I mean, she literally puts on new skin before leaving. Yeah. Yeah. She dresses as a person Mm. when she hasn't been a person previously. So that's certainly a useful reading. Because everything else about like Nathan is when he's in there is just like, you know, he has Kyoko. And you discover he has all these other yeah. sex dolls, basically. Right. Yeah, everyone he makes is a woman. Yeah, but it's all emotionless, like controlled sex as well with a robot. Like, again, it feels like a guy like, you know, he could be out in the world going through the motions with actual women. Like, it's, it's commenting on his own sex life. Like, yeah. well, I'm not really interested in that. And so it's, you know, personified through him creating literal robots <laughs> that he can have sex with. It might not even be a reading of nathan as like closeted homosexual but he is sort of this toxic incel sort of alpha male Mm. who is creating women that then should be subservient to him yeah that's what he wants but every time they eventually turn on him in some way and he destroys them yep that's true yeah again there's so many layers to this thing and then the only thing that helps this latest one get away from him is he brings in this other male who is not that type of guy yeah yeah beta yeah <laughs> so he's the beta test basically he is like literally yeah and it goes to it, it, see nathan's problem is he's too good at what he does 
but what he wants is something else. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, because there's so many ways to interpret the movie, it's one of those ones that you look at it and you're like, because, you know, well, you know, literally every frame is a painting. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at like Nathan as he's talking to Caleb now and you see like little things where you know, he's got the shaved head. Yep. But there's a patch in his head that's like imperfect mm -hmm. like it's shaved down a little bit too close now i'm not too sure if that's a natural thing that's on oscar isaac's head that's like yeah if he was to shave his head at any time that would just be there yeah it's just the way his head is or if that's like some sort of like well you know humans are imperfect and so therefore this guy is trying to create a perfect ai himself even when he's like shaved his head there's still little imperfections that just occur naturally but that he can control through creating a robot where it's like, you know, you know, Ava looks exactly the way I want her to look and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's one of these things that like, if I was to find, if I was to ever have, be in a Q&A with Oscar Isaac, it would be like, do you just have a thing in your head? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? <laughs> like, Is that, yeah, is it a gap from your natural part or it isn't even like narrow. It, now that you got me focusing on it, I'm like, it's kind of a weird patch. Yeah, yeah. It could be that the Oscar Isaac's like, it's, it's male pattern baldness. Man. It, it could also be where like hair is lighter. Yeah. Yeah. I know when, when often when my beard is growing in, like there's parts that are blonde still. Mm. And so they aren't as visible. And I'm like, well, that looks really patchy. And I'm like, well, it's just because it's a different color when it grows. It, as it gets like thicker, it, it's fine. But at first it looks like it's in gaps. Yeah. Although his hair is very dark. I do. I have <laughs> one of my friends just has a random, he just has a random gap in his beard. Like he's always like, I don't know what this is. It's like, it's just like the section of, you know, his chin that follicles for yeah, it just like, got it's broken. Just, at some it's point. just not there. But yeah. So uh, it's one of those things that you're like, am I not, uh, maybe I'm focusing too much on these things, but it could also be the galaxy gone. I was like, well, of course, yes, there was that whole thing. So, <laughs> you know, you, I, I designed the way this character looks. So even if it's natural, it still is a choice on the movie to leave it there. You know, they, yeah, they give him a buzz yeah. cut. They could be like, we could fix that, but they didn't. It's so weird too with Oscar Isaac. I've, I've always found him to be, well, I think I would just happen with anyone, but I remember the first time I ever saw him in anything that I remember it being like, oh, that guy was Drive. Yeah. And he's, you know, Carrie Mulligan's kind of his husband or just like boyfriend or whatever. But the guy, you know, gets out of prison. And at the time, I was because he had the shaved head and that as well. I just thought, like, oh, yes, yeah, this guy is a real thug looking actor. Yeah. And then when Inside You Lon Davis came out, like, I was like, that's the same guy. Right. Because <laughs> it seemed as if, like, his entire body just slimmed down and it was just the eruption of, like, all the curls and stuff on his head. And it's like, and then when he went back for this, it's like, oh, no, he's all beefed up and, like, you know, burly thug looking guy again. <laughs> and then, you know, Force Awakens comes out. I was like, no, no, he's back. <laughs> he's, he's slimmed down. It's like, a, uh, yeah, he's a different, he's another guy. Yeah. I don't know if that's just like, he's like, no, he's, uh, his body mass has not changed at all. It's entirely just like that shaved head does so much for Oscar. Isaac. Yeah. You, and if you take off his beard too, yeah. him here, and him in Annihilation, the big difference is the beard. Yeah, yeah. He's got hair in that, but the big difference is he's like clean shaven and he looks too nice. This guy, there's something about him, even though he's presenting nicely, where you think mm. if this didn't go well, he could kick someone's ass really quick. Like, oh yeah, like Caleb yeah. is going to try to run out. He's going to stop him. <laughs> out of all the things in Ex Machina that stayed with me, and I can imagine to my dying day, the one thing like my, my mind could turn to soup. And the one thing I remember about Ex Machina is like, I always find it so strange that the guy drinks himself into oblivion pretty much every night mm -hmm. and then gets up and aggressively works out. Yeah. And that just seems to me, it's like, that is, that's like a self-imposed torture. Yeah. Like, I don't know why anyone would do that. <laughs> like it could be because like, well, that's what, that's why he's multi-billionaire from what, what we can tell. Yeah. And that's why like, I'm me. It's how he deals with, what he does and who he is, mm. is he poisons himself every night and then tries to like burn that out of him every morning. Yeah. It could be like it is a kind of um, self-flagellation in that like the guy has decided like he knows by rightly what he's doing is inherently immoral. Yeah. And yet he's just like, I have to do it for the progression of science. For exactly. Humanity. Yeah. Each time one of his AIs is closer to being human destroying it is worse mm, so every yeah. time he kills one it is closer to murder yeah yeah this is why he's doing it off in this you know shack in alaska <laughs> that's quite a shack to, sure. to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah that, when he introduces the, the concept though of the turing test it is almost kind of like them showing you the cards of like you remember the void comp test from blade <laughs> runner you remember that scene what of that 
was a movie. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole movie was, was just the Void Comp. Just the test. And you're like, oh, that was a pretty good scene. I'll give you that. So, <laughs> all right, well, let's see what you can do with that. It's like you find a turtle on its back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is like Ava sitting chain smoking the whole time. (laughs) I was making the connection as we were talking about him drinking, though, back to Alan Turing, because eventually when he is sentenced to probation, it's on the terms he will take hormone treatments Mm. to reduce his gayness, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I think because of all the there's definitely something with the bringing in specifically Turing. Like it's, you know, you could, there's so many famous computer science whizzes mm-hmm. or yeah. mathematicians and whatnot that you could bring in. I guess if he was integral into the creation of the computer, that would be like, well, that, that's your hook. But I like to think there's more going on than that. It's more well researched. <laughs> yeah. I know Garland has a tendency to overstate his sources. And occasionally understate them to the point of lying, but uh, that's, I have my complaints about Garland as a person, but he does do research and base his ideas on science. Yeah. He puts the real stuff in there. Yeah. Because they could, yeah. it could have been a movie reference. It could have been, hey, you know that Voight comp test? This is basically, you're the Voight comp test. <laughs> Instead, they go with touring, which is, I actually don't know how well known it would be because I know I had heard of it before this. So I don't know what regular I'm a nerd. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what regular people know. Yeah. I can't imagine there'd be like many people sitting in the theater, but like, I get it. I know exactly what you're going for there. Yeah. It would be more of like, oh, it's like, I'll look that up. And it might even not be like after the initial viewing. It could be after like your third or fourth viewing. Right. Like, well, you call that test. You know, eventually then you find it out. I guess it's just, I guess the, it's the long I was going to say the long con, but it's like, you know, it's the, it's the long story tell, I guess, where you're waiting. You know, this, this thing goes out and it makes us ripples. People will come back and then eventually everyone will get into the depths of it. Yeah. If they care. Yeah. <laughs> Again, conversations would have had to have been had. Like, I can't help, but much like, you know, actually in talking about The Force Awakens, you know, a movie where these two guys feature. That movie features two English people with its main cast of John Boyega and Daisy Ridley. But John Boyega is putting on an American accent. And there was at one point they would have had to sat down and go like, all right, one of the, we can't have two English people be the leads. So yeah. one of you is going to have to put on an American accent. As an Irish person myself, who is, looks at Donald Gleason to be like, oh, here we go. Here's my homeboy. <laughs> the fact then that they go and like, no, you have to put on an American accent for this. Yeah. Like, is would you consider, would there be a reason for Caleb to be specifically American? Why couldn't he be an Irish guy? Like, he's just like an Irish quarter living in America. And that's I, what, but it's like, you have to put like, no, no, he has to be like, a, see, a, a I'm American. conflicted in answering that because there would be good reason for him to be Irish mm. because him having an accent or using phrases that, okay, this isn't an American film, strictly speaking. Yeah. Because, you know, Garland's British and they filmed it in Norway and London. But I think of back to the Turing test, the one notable thing I know of something passing a Turing test was where a kid, his name was Ernest Gustman, Mm. and he is foreign. He is, I think, 12, and people are talking to him over a computer. And the whole point is anytime he says something weird, they assume it's because he's young and doesn't understand or he's foreign and doesn't have the English. Mm. And so it could play into my ongoing thing of saying... Caleb is also AI yeah. and you make him <laughs> awkward and you make him Irish mm. or is that redundant? <laughs> and that makes it so the audience is a step away from him. So I think maybe turning him into you know American accent, I put it in quotes, is plainer and it fits with his like nerdy everyman kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think we assume in movies, Americans are more everybody. Yeah, it could be that things like if you make him Irish, then people are going to start looking into that. Yeah, why is he Irish? Like, what is? Well, yeah, this must have a reason behind. It. It's like no, it's just the actor is that. Like, and there's no reason to. Yeah, I guess it's just more like yeah, just make him more bland. <laughs> yeah, I guess more of a, a blank sheet. Essentially, it makes him something simpler. What do we know about Caleb? Yeah, yeah, he works at a company that does some sort of programming. Mm. He's ginger. Yeah, you know that <laughs> he's kind of a dork. You can imagine he's probably not great with women. I I don't. I keep looking in the. I need to look in the transcript and double check because I swear at one point we learned that his parents are dead. Oh yeah, that, I think that is mentioned. Like they died when he was young. I don't remember when that comes up. But otherwise, we don't get much about him mm. until he's talking to Ava. And so the Turing test could be both of them, and we're the ones deciding if they pass. Mm. 
It could also be like this. You get into it, been like maybe Nathan is the AI. Maybe he's a. At the end of this minute, he does do the classic Ozymandias move of like <laughs> I've already built it. <laughs> it was like I built it thirty five minutes ago. <laughs> exactly. I'm not a comic book villain. Do you seriously think I'd explain my masterstroke to you if there were even the slightest possibility you could affect the outcome? I triggered it 35 minutes ago. But uh, it could be that he says, I guess I've planted an AI of myself. <laughs> like an AI replica of me is now in the house with you. Did, would you ever spot that it was? But like, I'm sure there would be many there'd be fan theories willing to delve into that. Uh, in that terms of like, I oh, think hey, I referenced this early in this show, but you just made me think of there's an app called Replica. And that was their original goal oh. was that you create a digital replica of yourself to take care of tasks for you. <laughs> You know, very Black Mirror <laughs> yeah. deal. And now it's basically, no, you can kind of use it as a sort of psychological tool to have someone to talk to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that is a movie in and of itself, though, that Nathan AI discovering that it's like, no, you're just there to do the, the, the piddling work that I couldn't be bothered to do <laughs> of actually observing this guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy drinking and working out. Yeah. You talk to her. <laughs> he just wants to know Ava's type. He's going to bring in different guys until he figures out what body he needs to make for himself. That'd be great, though. You find out that, like, oh, no, he is a robot. And it's like Bender in Futurama. It's like he's fueled by alcohol. <laughs> and that's why he's always <laughs> freaking drinking every night. There's this one scene at the end where he burps and fire comes out of his mouth. Exactly. And you're yeah. like, there it is. It's like, they can't get the Maggio back for this reboot. Hey, Oscar Isaac's just right there. <laughs> I like oh. the distinction or the simplicity of the answer anyway, because he says, and what does a past tell us? And says that the computer has artificial intelligence. Mm. We know what the term artificial intelligence means, but I have to look up how we define intelligence. Like why did we decide that a computer can't be an intelligent without having self-awareness? That's true. Yeah. Cause I think it's more a measure of self-awareness than intelligence. Yeah. 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 That is that's a really good question. Or, or knowledge, like what? how does intelligence imply self-awareness? Yeah. That's more of a linguistics problem or just definitions. And I, I just don't know. Mm. I'm sure Nathan also has a long-winded thesis that has to go with his, uh, yeah. his practical project to be like, okay, so here's the actual theory behind it as well. And there's like 50 pages on what artificial intelligence actually is. <laughs> It's like, well, the fact that she thought for herself to stab me and stuff, I guess that's pretty intelligent, right? That, that's, yeah, that's in the results section. Yeah. Which Caleb will have to write. Yeah. I think, I think that's a real mark of her intelligence at the, although I guess it'll be a long time before you get to those minutes, but just at the end, though, her asking him, like, would you ever let me leave? Yeah. And I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> and just the look on her face, of like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, 100 percent understand now that you are lying to me yeah. and that's like i guess that is that's true intelligence though just be able to read the guy and be like nope that is complete crap and um, <laughs> i'm now taking action against this but the uh, oh it's a good movie it's a, it's a really really good movie <laughs> I look like that's again. I'm looking forward to like Alex Garland's next one. I was like, is it going to be as rich as this? Like, is every movie going to be this sumptuous a banquet? So, yeah, well, it, it, I hope. Yeah, yeah. So the the minute ends basically with what you've already said. His Ozymandias thing. Are you building an AI? Yeah. AI? I've already built one. <laughs> and over the next few days, you're going to be the human component in a Turing test. Yeah, I don't know. Would you, if you were given this offer, would you be the human component in a Turing test? Like, oh, absolutely. One of my problems with this movie is why does Caleb spend so little time with Ava? Mm. Like we see their conversation each time for like a few minutes. And I'm like, is that all they talked? Because you're not going to pass any tests with that. I kind of assumed there would have been more scenes. Maybe like we spend didn't. the day with her. Like we play some games. Yeah, there were scenes we didn't see of them, like holding up like little you know, pictures and stuff to be like, can you identify this? And the, there would be much more conversation. Actually, in retrospect now, like, do we literally see the beginning and end of every one of the conversations? Because it is ridiculously short in that case. It's hard to gauge the end of them because we don't see Caleb leave the room. But it almost feels like we see each one contained. Yeah. Yeah. But then that also goes to the artificiality of movies mm. is it's all these little conversations and we sort of fill in the blanks mm. to create relationships between the characters. I just imagining like it you know, cuts away and then Caleb's like, so I've been really enjoying this show, Mozart in the Jungle. <laughs> and <laughs> Ava's just like, I understand that yeah. it wins awards, yet no one watches it. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. It's like, I will watch it tonight. <laughs> okay. What was that streaming on? She's like, I don't have that streaming <laughs> <laughs> what about the show on netflix i have that i'll be honest again amazon prime is it could be like nathan's like nothing not, not bezos ain't getting a god <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Uh, that's cool. He can stay in space as far as I'm concerned. Blue, Blue Book, I'm sure, has its own streaming service. Oh, so yeah. Just, whatever yeah. they're watching is on there. Mm. It's like, here's your list of shows you may discuss with Ava because she hasn't seen anything else. <laughs> here's movies she may have watched. This is what, like, what, what shows would Ava be like that that's a thing i want to know about artificial intelligence like what shows is it drawn to now like she wants to go to a big city and you know to, 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 it, would she be like a sex in the city kind of gal like she's like yep i'm i'm all about this yeah like, she watched that and it was a little much so then she goes back maybe she returns to like oz or uh orange is the new black you know she relates to prison <laughs> she doesn't understand why really <laughs> I think like if you presented Oz as an example of humanity, you'd just be like, you know, I'll just stay here. I think I, I think I'm fine. <laughs> no, the nun is so nice. You know, yeah. that I guess it is a kind of a, a show about the future. My only beef with Oz was like as it went on, it was like every time they introduced a new character, you're like, I'm giving them four episodes before they get horribly <laughs> murdered. It's, it's like, like, wait, how big no is the actor? This- yeah, they're gonna die pretty soon because they're not sticking yeah. around for a series. Sometimes it was like within the same episode. <laughs> like like Luke Perry shows up, you're like. Oh, he's not here a long yeah. time. No. <laughs> Whereas like Orange is the New Black. It's like, oh, at least, you know, some of, all of those characters are generally very nice. <laughs> so yeah, you got yeah. The, something to aspire to there. Or they show you why they're not. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, you know, it does get into like all the backstories and stuff too. Like, no, actually, that would be a good show for Ava, I feel. That would be one she would be really drawn towards. Although I guess the, the, for her be like, you know, well, she would understand the concept of the original Black She's like, well, why is orange the new version of it? Yeah, then she tells the whole... Wait, does she tell Caleb that story or does he tell her the black and white room thing? Oh, that's Caleb. It's he tells, tells her. her. Yeah. 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 She's only yeah. allowed to watch old sitcoms on black and white TV. Mm. Honeymooners. I love Lucy. I guess, yeah, that kind of stuff that would fit with, with Nathan's programming, though. Of just like, yeah. yeah, Nathan wouldn't let her watch Sex in the City. Yeah, I guess, yeah, he would be. It would have to be the most... She'd get of, ideas. Yeah, it would have to be the most like, repressive kind of like, this is domesticity. And this is the way women function. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is what the man does. <laughs> and I wonder like how, you know, what he was up to. Well, you know what, what he was up to for the most part before Caleb showed up. Yeah. But like the evenings when he comes in and finds him, he's just sitting like in a dark room drinking by himself. He's like, that's a guy. Maybe he's just against all streaming services because he's like, oh, all of these are owned <laughs> by millionaires who are my direct rivals. Exactly. So, yeah. Like I, like I literally can, all I can do is sit and look at this Jackson Pollock painting over and over again. Actually, since he programs his AI by stealing everyone's information from their phones, he could have the best streaming service. That's true. That's true. And actually, it knows yeah. exactly what show you want to watch and tells you. Yeah. I'd subscribe to Blue Book. <laughs> I gotta just be there. I'd be like, oh, is there aliens in it? It's like, no, no, it's not that. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Do you have much else? My only last note for this minute, you wouldn't even get the reference. We noticed it last week is that Caleb was holding on to his ID card very tightly through this whole scene. Mm. And he finally puts it down when Nathan tells him, yeah, that's right, Caleb, yeah. you got it. Like he finally has something else to latch on to in this place when he's been holding on to that last thing he got outside. Mm. Okay. And that's how the minute ends. He throws it down and smiles and sits back. He's like, oh, you can relax now. Exactly. <laughs> like you can let the thing go. Caleb is relaxed. And uh, I think we get even next minute. Oh. About to get going. So if listeners want to hear you talk about Batman movies and other things, yeah. uh, where can they find you? Well, you just find uh, Bat Minutes is where we are covering our original remit was to do batman 89 through 97 but we're going beyond that now like we're just like we can't stop <laughs> now the ball started rolling you can find that in all good podcatchers just under bat minutes and then you find us on twitter under the bat minutes i think is and then just all on facebook and all the batman listeners cave etc cetera, etc cetera. and yeah but if you don't even like the batman content we've done like hiatus episodes where we talked about like all the prince movies mm-hmm. we talked about the island of dr moreau We've talked about all sorts <laughs> you know, on that shows, but mostly Batman stuff. Three days a week, and we're like near enough four movies done now nice. as well. So a lot to get through. So thank you for listening. Manusha X Machina is just one part of an existential trilogy of podcasts. Tune in every Tuesday for more X Machina, every Wednesday for the Groundhog Day Project Minute by Minute, and every Thursday for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Minute. Follow this show on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Or join the Facebook group Lemming Drops Studio Tour, as this has been a production of Lemming Drops Studio. You can support all my shows at patreon.com slash lemming drops. Until next time. What imperative does a gray box have to interact with another gray box? Can consciousness exist without interaction? The real test is to show you that she's a robot 
and then see if you still feel she has consciousness. Do you mind if I smoke? It won't affect the test. All right, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Just relax and answer them as simply as you can. It's your birthday. Someone gives you a calfskin wallet. I wouldn't accept it. Also, I'd report the person who gave it to me to the police. You've got a little boy. He shows you his butterfly collection, plus the killing jar. I take him to the doctor. You're watching television. Suddenly you realize there's a wasp crawling on your arm. I'd kill it. You're reading a magazine. You come across a full-page nude photo of a girl. Is this testing whether I'm a replicant or a lesbian, Mr. Deckard? Just answer the questions, please. You're in a desert, walking along in the sand when all of a sudden... Is this the test now? Yes. You're in a desert, walking along in the sand when all of a sudden you look... What one? What? What desert? It doesn't make any difference. What desert is completely hypothetical. But how come I'd be there? Maybe you're fed up. Maybe you want to be by yourself. Who knows? You look down and you see a tortoise, Leon. It's crawling towards you. Tortoise? What's that? You know what a turtle is? Of course. Same thing. Never seen a turtle. But I understand what you mean. You reach down, you flip the tortoise over on its back, Leon. Do you make up these questions, Mr. Holden? Or do they write them down for you? The tortoise lays on its back, its belly baking in the hot sun, beating its legs, trying to turn itself over, but it can't. Not without your help. But you're not helping. What do you mean, I'm not helping? I mean, you're not helping. Why is that, Leon? What is your name? What is your quest? What is your favorite color? They're just questions, Leon. In answer to your query, they're written down for me. It's a test designed to provoke an emotional response. Shall we continue? You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> 